pretty handy little uh, <clears throat> drain there. I actually never used it. Um, I was planning on doing like, you know, switching the car from E85 back to gas and, you know, doing that deal to make sure that, you know, the fuel system doesn't get corroded and all that. But what I did, what I was doing was just starting it like every other day just to make sure, you know, I get it up to temperature. All the injectors were firing, you know, um, <clears throat> so, and I never have, I haven't had any issues with those injectors. So anyway, um, I gotta let this drain and then, uh, yeah, I can start um, making some lines. All right, dash eight. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this line off here on this side of the pump. Probably gonna leak some fuel, of course, I'm sure. So, most likely, the line is full all the way to the front, so probably gonna leak quite a bit, but this stuff dries really quick. Yep. So yeah, that's the nice thing about the uh, E85. It's like alcohol, it just kind of evaporates really quick and doesn't stain anything, so that's cool. Um, so what I want to do is grab, grab our this Y fit in here. Okay, this is what's going to be going on here. So I'm just going to kind of mock it up right now to see exactly where everything's going to go. Um, so this end here, one of these is going to go to, to one of these, this side here. And, and also the check valve is going to go. So if this one goes here, um, like that, like, so the check valve is going to be going in line here. Okay. And then on the end of this will be our other pump. All right, guys, so here's a little update of what we have so far. Um, got the pumps mounted on the dual bracket, okay? Kind of had to do them sideways. Instead of going this way, I had to mount them sideways. And I've already got one line um, hooked up from one side to here. This is going to be the main pump, okay? So that pump is going to have to run directly to the Y, just like that. So I'll have to uh, connect it there. So that'll be the main, the main pump. Now, this one here is gonna be a little tricky. Um, this, this will be easy to hook to uh, that fitting there. Um, I'll just get a 90 for that and then bring it down here and just bend it to there. Um, that's not a big deal, but um, getting, okay, from here, uh, this fitting is pointing this way, okay? It's going this way. So I'm gonna have to run a line up and around here, up behind here and, <clears throat> also fit in the oh so yeah also i gotta fit in the uh, check valve so the check valve is gonna have to go i don't know maybe mount it behind here or something and then wrap this one around this way to be able to meet up with this um this y here so i just don't want to do it like i don't want to try to flip it and do it this way because i feel like that's too close to the tire i mean i could do that i suppose um, and then run directly to it, but I'm not sure if I want to run it that close to the tire or not. I mean, it's, there's going to be tire rubber splashing on it all the time. Um, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Let me, uh, do a little bit more looking at it and mocking it up a little bit and see how much clearance I have. Okay. So we got both pumps hooked up to the fuel cell. Um, everything looks good. Um, they're running this way. Um, we have, I made a small line here for uh, the main pump. Um, this is going to have to get strapped up somehow on the uh, frame rail there. And then, yeah, so then all I have to do is come around here with the uh, check valve and then into here. And um, that's pretty much it. Um, and it's all set up. So uh, it's getting a little dark right now, so we'll finish this project tomorrow. But um yeah, it's going along pretty good, and then we're going to wire it up, and I'll get it all done in this video here. So, um, But I'll be back in the morning. 
All right guys, so it's the next day and we're about done with this little uh, project here. Um, as you can see, we got all the plumbing, all the lines made. Um, I didn't show, you know, making lines because there's so many videos on YouTube about how to make the uh, the Teflon lines with the, with the hoses and the fittings and all that. So uh, anyway, okay, so we have the check valve here um, that goes into the Y. We have the main pump here um that doesn't have a check valve so that'll be running all the time uh so <clears throat> if flow tries to come back here it'll get stopped by the check valve and um so when the secondary pump kicks on it'll open this uh valve and provide all the volume into this uh y here so uh yeah um pretty much what i did was i made a few little uh aluminum brackets that i screwed into the uh, frame rail there and up underneath here and with some holes okay so i'm pretty much just going to kind of run that up in there and then i can run a zip tie like you know around it so yeah then i can run pretty much run like a zip tie okay through here uh pretty much get the line behind it like so as you can see kind of like that and then as i tighten it it'll clamp down the it'll clamp down the hose and hold it there so and i have two more here also <clears throat> but yeah that's pretty much how that's gonna work and uh so let me get this finished up and then we'll go straight into wiring it and um we'll go test it out okay so Everything's done. Um, we got these tied up on these little brackets I made. Um, everything is real good. Um, clears all the suspension, uh, no issues there. Um, it doesn't hang down low at all. So you kind of see, that's about it right there as far as it hangs down. So yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, one thing I'm gonna do before I wire it is I'm going to put a gallon of fuel in the uh, tank and then let it um, kind of, you know, gravity feed down and <clears throat> pretty much just fill these lines and I want to see if there's any leaks. So I'll put, like I said, I'll put like a gallon in there and then just let it sit for an hour and you know, let everything fill up. And then I don't think we're gonna have any leaks, but you know, I just want to make sure before I wire it and um, in case I got to take it back apart. So let me put some fuel and um, yeah, we'll see if it leaks. Okay, so we'll start here, um, just kind of feel up under the fittings and um, that's kind of the best way to check for leaks is to feel underneath and see if your hand, your finger's wet because sometimes you won't see it actually dripping. You'll just see it kind of um, seeping, kind of. So, so far so good there. Nothing there. It's good there. So yeah, I, you know, you won't know 100% for sure until you start running some pressure. Um, but actually there's really no pressure back here. So I can check these, um, you know, that are go, that go to the uh, fuel cell. These, these don't ever have pressure. So, but yeah. So what I'll do is uh, I can hook up the uh, same wires that I've been using back up temporarily and just prime it and, um, what I'll do is I'll disconnect the fuel rail and kind of prime some fuel through the lines. Cause anytime you make some uh, new fuel lines, you want to like flush it. You don't want to run that straight to the rail and get it into your injectors. Uh, it's better just to, you know, if, you, if there's any debris in there, I mean, probably the filter will catch it if there's any debris in there, but it's always a good practice to do that. Just crack your line and let it drain out a little bit onto the floor or whatever, just, just a little bit, not a lot. And um, yeah, then we'll go from there. All right, guys, it's the next day and uh, we have the everything hooked up. Uh, we had a little bit of a leak in one of the fittings, so I had to fix that. And, uh, but anyway, I have the, um, so yeah, I have it wired up as well to a uh, new relay and to uh, this H-bridge out output right here, um, G2. And I just wanted to show you guys how this works 
as far as um, right now I have it set one of the conditions is the throttle position so I have it set at 50% throttle position okay so turn the ECU on here and I'll just show you guys that when the throttle reaches 50% the fuel pump will kick on so we'll go ahead and uh, I'll start depressing the uh, throttle and you can see the percent start going up and as soon as it hits 50% the pump should kick on so yeah I'm hopefully you guys heard that but um, yeah the pump just kicked on so that's just one of the conditions you can use uh, you know right now I have it set at with TPS but I probably won't even use TPS uh, I'm probably gonna get rid of that. I just did it for testing purposes, okay? So I'm probably gonna use a different condition, probably MAP, okay? I'll use MAP and RPM probably. Those are the, probably the two conditions that I'm gonna set for the fuel pump to kick on. So, um, because it only starves for fuel in the, in the, in the higher boost uh, areas, so um, I don't need it when it's not making boost. So MAP is gonna be this, the main one, and RPM, like I don't even have to use RPM either if I don't want, but I'll probably throw that in there just so, um, you know, <clears throat> when I, you know, that way when I'm on the two step, okay, when I'm trying to launch it, if I don't want the fuel pump on, I can set the RPM no matter what the map is. So it'll have to meet both conditions. And then once it launches, you know, and let's say it hits 52, 5300 RPMs, if I'm launching at 5000, then the, the pump will kick on. I don't know. I have to play with that at the track to see where I'm starting to lose fuel pressure. Maybe it is on the trans brake. I don't know. I'll have to, you know, just kind of log it and look at it. So, but right now what we'll do is we'll take it out and I'll run, <clears throat> do a couple little uh, hits on, you know, like maybe 25 pounds of boost to see if, cause that's right around where I was starting to lose pressure. So, uh, we'll do that and then log it and let's see if we uh the fuel pressure stays consistent and then we'll know we pretty much have have it set up right okay so we're about to go out and make a quick little hit and uh see what it does uh, i'm gonna set the uh duty cycle here at uh 40 percent so we're at 40 percent duty cycle which uh that's right around where I was seeing the uh, fuel pressure falling off. So um, we have the condition set to at 220 kPa. It's going to kick the other pump on. So um, so yeah, it should definitely make more than that. It should probably make around 250 kPa on that setting. So uh, it should kick on, and we'll see it uh, hopefully correct the fuel pressure. And um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll look at the log once we make a little quick hit. Okay, so let's go through the log a little bit um, and take a look and see what's actually happening here. So, um, I'll try to zoom in or whatever if I have to, to so you guys can see this. But uh, right here, uh, this is our AFRs, okay? And as you can see, they start off really good, 7.9, 7, 7.7, 7, 7, 8. Okay, and our fuel pump hasn't kicked on yet because we're still at 135 kPa and I have it set around 200. Okay, so we're running four and a half uh, bar of fuel pressure. It starts to raise to 4.8 and then as soon as it hits 220 kPa, that fuel pump kicks on. Okay, and it jumps to five bar and then continues to raise up to uh, the highest was 5.88 bar. Okay, right there. <clears throat> so it raised up to 5.8 bar. 
So we know that's working. We know the fuel pump is kicking on and raising the fuel pressure. Okay, so that's gonna give us other problems, which we can work around, you know, um, it's not a big deal, but so 5.8 bar is like 83 pounds of fuel pressure, 83 PSI, that's pretty high. That's high fuel pressure. So I may have to go in and adjust the regulator a little bit down so it doesn't go so high because what's happening is now that it jumps up to, you know, 80 pounds of fuel pressure or a little over 80 pounds of fuel pressure, my um, AFRs are going way rich, okay? So it drops, I'll kind of zoom in there, um, all the way to 7.3 uh, lambda, which is super rich, okay? We're looking for 0.78 and it's going 0.73, which that's the wrong way. Um, we need it to be 0.78 area. So yeah, everything is working exactly how it's supposed to. Um, we just need to now adjust the fuel map to make up for that extra fuel pressure uh, and also adjust the fuel pressure regulator a little bit to compensate for that as well. Okay, so I don't think I need 80 pounds of fuel pressure. Um, you would only need that uh, when you're up in the really higher boost levels. And the reason you, you, you run high fuel pressure like that is to counteract, um, let me see if I can explain this. So if let's say you're running, um, 70 pounds of boost, um, you, when your injectors open, you're going to need more than 70 pounds of fuel pressure in order for the injectors to even inject because you have that boost pushing back against the fuel injector, okay? So it's not letting the fuel come out. So you need to overcome that, which we're nowhere near that. So I don't need 80 pounds of fuel pressure, okay? Um, I think we'd be good around 60 or 70. So we can just adjust the uh, regulator down a little bit to, to compensate for that. And also um, what's nice is, is when that fuel pump kicks on, I mean, our duty cycle, look at our duty cycle, okay? It's at 55%, 55% duty cycle. So it lowered the duty cycle big time. Whereas I was running at this boost level around 70% duty cycle. Okay, so we went from 70% duty cycle down to 55. So everything is better, okay? Um, but like I said, we, we just fattened everything up because of the extra fuel pressure but we'll work around that and um, yeah, we have some more tuning to do, tuning to do. But anyway, that's gonna do it for this video guys. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something and I uh, will check you all next time.